Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the binomial distribution. And so for this video it's going to be useful if you're already familiar with the binomial coefficient. And so if you're not, I'm going to link the video I've made on that in the description so you can go and watch that video, then come back and see this one. As well as that, I'm going to timestamp the different parts of this video. So if you just want to skip through to the criteria you need to use a binomial distribution or an exam question that I'm going to do at the end, then you can skip through to that. And so let's start off with a nice question that I think introduces the binomial distribution quite nicely. Okay, and so it says that I'm going to flip a fair coin three times and we need to find the probability we get zero heads, the probability we get one head and the probability we get two heads. Okay, and so for part A that's actually pretty easy. So what is the probability I get zero heads when I flip a coin three times? Well for that to happen I need to get tails, then tails, then tails. And as it's a fair coin, the probability I get tails is 0.5 or 50%. And so we get 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 0.5, which is equal to 0.5 cubed. Okay, And that is the probability. I mean, we could work it out as well. If I do 0.5 cubed on my calculator, we get 0 0.125. And that is the probability of getting zero heads when I flip a fair coin three times. Part B, though, is a little bit trickier. We need to find the probability that we get one head when we flip a coin three times. Now, for that outcome to happen, there's three different ways it could happen. I could flip the coin three times and I could get, say, heads, tails, tails. Let's write them down. I could get heads, tails, tails. Or we could get a tails first, then a head, then a tails. Or we could get tails, tails, heads. Right, And so when we're working out this probability, we need to take that into account. And so the way we would work this out is say, well, okay, for the first outcome where we get heads, tails, tails, what's the probability of that? Well, we get 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 0.5. For the second outcome where we get tails, heads, tails, what's the probability of that outcome where we get 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 0.5. And for the third outcome where we get tails, tails, heads, well, again, that's going to be 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 0.5, okay? And so now, just to make it really clear, I'm going to highlight which probability is referring to heads and which one's referring to tails. So I'll use this purple to represent the heads, so we've got 0.5 here, okay? And for the tails, we'll use this sort of green color here, so we've got tails like this, and these 0.5s are representing the tails, okay? Now, we could sort of simplify this a bit more. We could say that, well, it's 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 squared, okay, in each situation. So 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 squared plus 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 squared. Whoops. Where we have the first 0.5, which is just 0 0.5, not 0.5 squared, that's referring to the probability of success. Okay, and this 0.5 squared, which I'll highlight in green, that's referring to the probability of a failure being the probability we don't get the heads that we want. So we could simplify this even further, right? We could say that, well, how many ways are there to, are there to arrange one head in those three objects? Or how many ways out of the heads and tails can I arrange one head and two tails? Okay, and that's where the binomial coefficient comes in. We could say, well, it's three choose one, okay? And if you work that out on your calculator, it would give you an answer of three, okay? And you'll notice that we've got one, two, three different ways we worked out to arrange it here. Now we need to multiply it by the probability of success, okay, which was 0 0.5, so times that by 0 0.5. And then we're gonna multiply it by the probability of a failure, which is the probability we don't get ahead, which is 0.5 squared in each situation. And if we work that out on our calculator, we've got three choose one, which is three, multiplied by 0.5, multiplied by 0.5 squared, and we get an answer of 0 0.375, okay? Which is the same as what we would have got if we worked it out the long way up here. Now this is sort of getting into the binomial sort of distribution formula that I'll look at in a second. Let's just answer point part C first in the same way. So now we need to find the probability that we're gonna get two heads, and I'll write it like down here. So probability we get two heads, okay? So let's use the same logic to answer this one. Firstly, when we did it, we looked at the number of ways to arrange one head and two tails. Well, now we're looking at the ways to arrange two heads and one tail. So we're gonna do three choose two, okay? Multiplied by our probability of success, okay? Or So we're flipping it three times, okay? And I need heads and heads, so that's gonna be 0.5 squared. Multiplied by the probability of a failure, which is that we get the tails. So that's gonna be multiplied by 0.5, okay? And if we work that out, we've got three choose two, 
multiplied by 0.5 squared multiplied by 0.5, which again is 0 0.375, okay? And that's the probability of getting two heads, okay? So now let's actually introduce the uh, binomial distribution a bit more officially, right? So for something to be a binomial distribution, which we write like this, we write that our, our random variable x is a binomial distribution, b, where we have uh, n trials being like flipping the coin three times in the previous example, that was n equaling three, and the probability of success being p, okay? So getting a heads being the success would be 0 0.5, right? So for a uh, something to be a binomial distribution, we need to have a fixed number of trials n. So in the previous example, we had, well, three trials that was fixed we needed all the trials to be independent so if i say flip a coin once that has no implication on the second flip of the coin the probability of success p will has to be the same in every trial and each trial is a success or a failure so in the last example we get the heads or we don't right so that's pretty much the criteria if your situation meets those things then it's probably going to be a binomial distribution so let's now look at the formula, right? So it says the probability x equaling x, where we have our random variable x being the number of successes. Well, that's equal to n choose, uh, choose x multiplied by the probability of sex success to the power of x multiplied by 1 minus your probability of sex success to the power of n minus x. Okay, and I'll bring this down and we'll use it in a question and it's going to make a bit more sense. So I roll a fair dice four times and we need to find the probability we roll three fours. Okay, so this is a binomial distribution. Okay, how many trials have we got? What is our number of trials n? Well, we're rolling it four times. And what is the probability of success? Well, what's the probability I roll a four? Well, it's a six-sided dice. And the probability I roll one four is one out of six. So the probability of success is one over six. And we want the probability that we get three fours, which is three successes. So we could say the probability that x equals three well, that's equal to 4 choose uh, 3, I'm just substituting in the values that I know, multiplied by the probability of success to the power of x, where x is 3, multiplied by the probability of a failure, which is 5 over 6, to the power of n subtract x, which is 1, okay? And if I work this out on my calculator, and we get an answer of 5 over 324, which is approximately equal to, to say, uh, 3 decimal places, 0 0.1 oops, 0.015. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more A-level maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.